From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only newscast that gives you all the super news in the city or the world. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Good evening, Alpha Citizens. This is Craig Allen with this week's top story. The signing of the Alpha City Accords, officially ending the war between the nations of Maroc and Darun, was disrupted this past Wednesday when the Bride of War attacked the signing, taking place at the Conclave Building, home of the League of Nations. Representatives of most of the Middle East coalition, with the notable exception of Mafouz, were present to witness the historic end of the 15-year conflict when the villainess crashed through the front door of the meeting hall. The Bride of War, troubled scion of the horrors which occurred during the dissolution of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, stood in the rubble of the doorway, armed with a broken sword and carrying a flag emblazoned with the words Mir Zelaj, which means peace is a lie in Slovenia. The terrible apparition raised her face to the sky and screamed those very same words before leaping forward, sword raised, ready to strike down all those who, the bride has often claimed, would not end the horror of her war. The jagged blade never reached its intended target, though, as the heroine A. Flower, sometimes called the Lady of Peace, appeared between the bride and the terrified statesmen and women. A flower, one arm outstretched and blocking the hand holding the sword, the other raised between herself and the enraged red-faced attacker, was heard to quietly ask the bride how much death would be required to bring her peace. Answering only with an enraged snarl, the bride struck at A flower, but even her blinding speed could not land a blow. As A flower seemed to float gently away, just far enough for the mailed fist to only brush her silk scarf. Further angered by her failure to connect, the bride focused on her opponent, allowing safety personnel to move the threatened diplomats away from the combat zone. For more than ten minutes, the bride and a flower circled one another, the scarlet-garbed bride pursuing the azure-hued hero. The bride struck again and again with fist and sword, only to find each time that the Lady of Peace, moving with an unhurried grace, had evaded each blow. All the while, A Flower kept repeating her question to the warrior she faced. It is unknown how long this dance would have gone on if, once the members of the treaty signing party were secured, the full complement of the League of Nations Power Armor Strike Force had not appeared. Realizing that even her might was not up to facing so many enemies, the Bride of War, spitting towards a flower and missing once again, activated a device on her belt and vanished. A flower was seen, after a moment of sad contemplation, picking up the Bride's fallen flag before she herself vanished from the scene. The diplomats, though shaken, concluded the peace accords in a smaller meeting room, less than an hour later. Lunchtime in the business district was briefly disrupted when sad excuse for a supervillain Ping Pong Pete attempted and failed to rob a hot dog cart. Ping Pong Pete, real name Peter Givens, and his ping-pong-related weaponry are a holdover from a brief vogue for sports themes among non-powered villains in the late 1970s and early 1980s, a breed typified by examples like the Red Dart, Mr. Snooker, and Roy Rugby, who even managed to rise to a brief membership in the Devil's Dozen. Ping-pong Pete is, in fact, the son of the volleyballer and Captain Javelin. Just released from the county lockup, where he had been incarcerated for 30 days on a charge of disrupting the peace, stemming from his standing for an hour last month outside the Hero Union building, shouting for someone, anyone, to come out and fight him until police were finally called by disturbed neighbors, Ping Pong Pete was apparently released without any cash, hence his try at shaking down a pushcart vendor. 
Pete reportedly threatened to serve an acid-filled ping-pong ball into the vendor's face if the gentleman was not forthcoming with his earnings, but was quickly distracted from this by the arrival of Bouncing Betty, who happened to be bounding by at the time. Though at first credited with Pete's apprehension, Betty confessed to intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston that she had never laid a hand on him. When Pete turned to face the heroine, Avram Manukian, the hot dog cart owner, jabbed his erstwhile robber in the side with a hot dog fork. The shock of this caused Pete to drop his acid ping pong ball onto his boot, where it cracked open and rapidly ate through the cheap faux leather of which the boot was made. Leaping backwards in pain, Pete apparently threw himself into a wall, crushing one of his pouches between himself and the brick. The crushed pouch must have contained at least one exploding ping-pong ball as Pete was thrown away from the wall violently, and no doubt would have been thrown into traffic had a street-side lamppost not ended his flight. After this high-speed contact, the one-booted, smoldering villain fell to the ground unconscious. Still insensate when arrested, Pete was taken to Westside Fellows Hospital, where he will be checked into the high security war. Regular listeners will know that it is rare for me to engage in editorializing. I see myself as a purveyor of the news, not a shaper of it. That being said, I must question why the actions of Ping Pong Pete are referred to as super crime. Not because Pete is a non-powered individual, as many men and women on both sides of the moral divide can be classed as superheroes or villain, all of whom lack any but the abilities given to all human beings. I dismiss Peter Gibbons as a supervillain due to his lack of committing anything that might be called a super crime. Does a man who has been arrested for causing a ruckus due to not being able to coerce any hero to come out from their headquarters to waste time, quote, fighting him, and who staged today what was less a crime than a slapstick almost suicide attempt merit the use of the adjective super? The opinion of this newscaster is no. I would hope that the authorities would agree and that they will not be paying the extra expense of housing Ping Pong Pete in the superhuman wing of whatever prison he might find himself in. A new villain calling himself Telekinesis appeared on television screens all over Alpha City this past Tuesday evening. The bald, stout gentleman, insouciantly holding a lollipop which he placed in his mouth when not speaking, strolled into the apartment of Jamie and Robin Marks, the main set of the show Their Sisters, just after the first commercial break at approximately 8.37, and immediately shot older sister Jamie Marks, played by Marjorie Martin, in the leg. Then, addressing the camera, the shooter gave his name and told the audience that Outstanding Studios, the producers of Their Sisters, had until 9 p.m. to deposit $250,000 in an offshore account, or he would execute Jamie Marks in front of the world. Calls by ACN staffers to WHRO, the station which broadcasts the show in Alpha City, confirmed that this was not part of the recorded broadcast. Outstanding Studios also confirmed that Marjorie Martin and the rest of the cast of their highest rated show were all whole and undamaged. Yet, there on the screen, the character of Jamie Marks lay bleeding on the floor of her apartment, comforted by her frightened sister and still threatened by the smiling gunman. Telly's smirk vanished, however, when he suddenly found himself bound in bands of what looked like television static. The villain's confusion only deepened when the gun was snatched from his hand by a large woman clad all in yellow. Tossing the weapon away from herself, the woman raised a hand to the still-trembling siblings, announcing that they were no longer in danger, as the video ranger had arrived to save them punctuating her statement by pointing with a thumb at the symbol on her chest. This caused a bit of confusion, as the symbol to which she gestured appeared to be two interlocked letter R's, and prompted telekinesis to ask what kind of idiot spelled video with an R. The heroine, a bit nonplussed, 
stammered that the costume had belonged to her grandfather, the Radio Ranger, and she hadn't had time, what with school and all, to update the logo. There was a moment of silence while all four people on the screen simply looked uncomfortably at one another before the Radio Ranger leapt across the apartment and, taking telekinesis by his collar, vanished in a burst of static. When viewers' TV screens returned to normal, the expected broadcast of the show had resumed, as though nothing had happened. Telekinesis, still bound by ropes made of static, was thrown out of a television at the 3rd Precinct. Alpha City Police Department spokesmen are requesting that anyone who taped the broadcast share those tapes with the authorities, as the original copies do not show the surprising interruption. This has been Alpha City News, written and produced by Carter Lee. If you'd like to get in touch, you can email at alphacitynews at gmail.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at Alpha City News. You can sponsor the show by going to patreon.com and searching for Alpha City News. You can also leave reviews at iTunes or leave a comment at rhymeswithgeek.com. RhymesWithGeek.com is also a great place to get the latest news and reviews of all things comic-related. Check them out. They're pretty cool. Until next time, Alpha Citizens, have a great week.